This helps to keep the continuum. You know, it, it underlines the importance of the music and the importance of young people appreciating the art form, even if they're not going to end up being professional musicians. This is the family reunion. <laughs> I got more hugs today than I have at my own family reunion. You know? <laughs> and we come together as if we are family. Oh, well, you just get a bunch of geeks around hanging out, looking at horns and trying out new mouthpieces and listening to mu new music, you know. I don't want to be anywhere else. Well, one special thing about this Gen event today, their second year, is the fact that so many of us went for years to IAJE and before that NAJE, and we've been able to regroup again in good old New Orleans, of all places, and just to meet, and we feel like the music is alive and jazz education is alive. We are seeing friends from Holland and Israel. Um, there, This is truly international. Somebody, in a radio station in Chicago, a DJ there, or, or somebody from... Um, LA, a musician from LA who comes into the conference and you get to say, hey, how you doing? You're still doing it. Oh, that's great. It's sort of like a wedding. If you hold it, you can worry about where the cake is or, or what time, how much time is spent on this. People come and they know what to do. They go, they come and they share. It's important to share your experience and your enthusiasm with young people who are getting interested in jazz. But that networking and that crossover between the professional jazz world and the professional education world is extremely important for us to keep bridging. Jin is that central location, that home that everybody can come to. Mary Jo Papich is like the mother of Jen, uh, just like uh, Lou Fisher is the father of Jen. Uh, they've been involved in jazz education their entire life, and there wouldn't have been a Jen without them, without their vision and, and dream and, and desire. See the sky and you and I. Without something like Jen, frankly, you've got people doing incredibly wonderful things in jazz education all over the world. But how do we lock elbows? How do we come together as one? How do we um, meet people and, and connect and share information? Hey, we'll take you through that. I'll, I'll, I'll have, Jeff, why don't you play the groove for that? Just play one chorus through. We'll kind of build it up from there. Going on the, the buzz here has just been fantastic, it's exciting, and there's so many good groups performing, and pros and students alike from middle schoolers, uh, actually Louisville Lepers has some, some elementary school kids too, so from elementary school all the way through collegiate, and all the pros. You just have to have like a fire with you with music. Like you have to love music. Well, music does a lot of things for kids. It um, lets them be more enthusiastic. It, it's a way for some shy kids to express themselves. Uh, I think it's like the feeling, just like that you're playing it right. Like no one, e no one else even has to know. It's just the feeling you get out of it. I firmly believe in jazz is different from other forms because we have improvisation. And I think jazz needs to be inclusive of all types of improvisation, no matter what genre of music, because in a sense it's a form of jazz. Uh, but I feel that it's, um, it's communication, as you well know, but it's even more importantly, uh, creative problem solving. And what does the world need today any more than creative problem solvers? One of the, the, the key aspects of improvisation is that to a certain extent, it, they, I mean, there's a big spiritual dimension to it. And so I think one of the things that it can do is it can really get people in touch with something other than the rational, other than the verbal. Uh, for, for singers as much as for instrumentalists, it can really put people in touch with something, something else that's non-denominational, shall we say. It gives them a purpose for life. Uh, I meet so many kids who don't go into music, but 
The opportunities we have when they're in high school or in middle school, like today I just play with the middle school. The experiences that Matt Wilson and I shared with the students yesterday in the master class and shared with them today on the bandstand, okay, so we may only get 10% that may play, but that other, you know, 90% are going to be our listeners. They're going to be our supporters. They're going to be the ones that say, hey, I remember how these guys coming and sharing helped me. Let me share what I know later on in life. <laughs> I would say come and be a part of it. Come and be a part of it. Do we have a set plan and a set? Well, we've got a little bit of a recipe in place, but I say join Jen, get involved, stay involved. This is your organization. Help mold the shape of, shape of the future of jazz education. Let it go where you feel it needs to go. Help us out with that. Now we're at stage two of the organization, right? Where we're going from the nuts and bolts that we had to go through. And, and stabilizing the organization financially to where we're in stage two, where we actually are creating initiatives now that will work to benefit kids. I think the goal is to try and make sure that this art form not only lasts, but expands and we expand these audience. I think more importantly than anything, I think that's the most important part of the mission is developing new audience appreciation. You know, we're not tr mostly training people to be professional musicians per se, we're developing people to be audiences.